Let's make it a good day. Coming up today, Hide the Pea Soup, The Exorcist is back. Details on a scary new trilogy, complete with an original series star. Find out more in the hot dish. Then, what is Moth Oddities? Kindle is taking you on a tour through a retro item wonderland. And it's a small world after all. A new show is taking you behind the scenes of some of the most legendary attractions at Disney theme parks. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. We do it our own way. Sing it out, every day. Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. Oh, no matter what they say. Sing it oh, yeah, yeah. Good morning, Esco. Good morning, Embarrass. And good morning, Fergus Falls. And good morning to you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Please join me in saying hello to my sidekick sister from another mister and Montgomery Ward's Employee of the Month, Kendall Mark. What's that? What's Montgomery Ward? Is that a clothing store? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, new hairdo. Uh, it was a it was like a department store, like a Sears. Uh, like um, Jacques Penet. Oh. Yeah, but okay. it went out of business in the early 2000s. I, we called it Monkey Ward. Uh, loved it. Loved it. I loved the Montgomery Ward. I'm so sorry that happened. I know. I miss department stores. I'm sorry. I just. I love them I like, too. but I miss good department stores. I like clean. I like mm -hmm. the big, the grandeur. Again, I'm from Northwest Indiana in the Chicago area, so. Yeah. We had the great, you know, State Street, Carson Perry Scott, uh, it, which, you know, and it was just it, Marshall Fields. It was mm, just, yes. it was part of Christmas. You went down to State Street and you got the Frango mints and, and anyway. No, I, I get it. We would go to the Dayton's um, Christmas exhibit all the yep. time. And I love parking at Nordstrom, even though I can't afford anything there. I really like to park there and then walk through the mall that way. You seem a little, um, um, what do I, how do I phrase this? You seem a little, Irritable today. Um, <laughs> is there something bothering you today? Um, well, Jason, I just don't like spoilers. Yeah. Um, now we're not going to spoil anything for you, so you won't have this face. Go Kendalitis. ahead. Or that fa that face right there. This is the face she's had all morning long. Because people, and I, I, I would rather walk on my lips than call people out. But Tom Butler, <laughs> uh, but Fox Nine anchor Tom Butler keeps ruining. Keeps. Letting Kendall know Olympic spoilers. And there was a big one today, and mm -hmm. it ruined your day. It just kind of came out of his mouth as he was reading it. Yeah. And at what point, myself and one of our directors, Laura, was like, ah! Yeah. And I'm then sorry. I knew things. You looked like that scene from The Exorcist that we just showed in the cold open. Yeah, like that. There she goes right there. Yeah, <laughs> that was you after Tom <laughs> Butler ruined it. Well, I mean, not to add to it, but I just want to let you know, Mary Lou Retton is not in this Olympics either. I just want to let you know. Jeff, I thought Spoiler we weren't alert. doing spoilers. I know. Yeah, well, anyway. Hey, I want to do a little shout out. Um, I don't usually like to talk about other radio stations because I hope that you would wa uh, you listen to my radio station, My Talk 1071, in the morning. But I want to give a special shout out uh, to K Fan producer uh, Zach Halverson. Now, uh, K Fan and the uh, the morning uh, the morning trip there it's a huge, hugely successful morning show. And uh, Zach is one of the producers over there with our buddy Chris Hockey, who's a, a friend of ours. And on Friday, uh, Zach uh, revealed that he is gay and uh, came out of the closet with a deeply personal uh, message that he tweeted out and then he spoke about it in the last segment of, it, of, of the show. And I just, uh, and I've gotten to know Zach over the last couple weeks, he reached out to me and uh, I just wanna say uh, congratulations to Zach. And I, I told him in one of our conversations, I said, you know, I want you to really enjoy Friday. Uh, Friday, I want you to take it in. I said, but I also want you, when you're nervous, or you're scared, or you don't know uh, what the reaction's gonna be, I want you to just stand, uh, stand tall in the knowledge that you're helping little Zachs and little Jasons that are listening to your show, because my goodness is that a large platform. And, and there, are, there are kids out there, there are young adults, there are adults listening to Zach and going, wow, if Zach can do this in this environment, and I don't like to generalize, but 
as you know, you're in the sport. Sports is one of the last frontiers. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's very, you know, macho sometimes and very yeah. and it's scary for anybody in that environment to, to really live their truth. So because of that, uh, people call each other brave too much. Zach was incredibly brave and looking at the comments, he was flooded with support. And I warned him of the ding dongs that are going to call him. You know, I, I warned him of the knuckleheads that are going to go out and why do you have to flaunt it? You know, I warned him about all that. And I said, don't don't let anyone take this moment away from you. Uh, and I just want to say congratulations to Zach. And I really look forward to the day when Zach Halverson's uh, don't make news. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. Uh, when when this isn't a big deal anymore. Right. And uh, and also I want to just take a moment. I've never really said this publicly, but I really want to take a moment to acknowledge all of my colleagues here that, you know, before, you know, they don't always get the headlines. They don't get splashy articles in the strip or the press or whatever. But, you know, there, I work with a lot of people at Channel 9 that have been living uh, out and proud for years and always n never denying who they were. And uh, I I'm walking across the bridge that they helped build. And uh, I just wanted to acknowledge that today, too. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Here we go. <laughs> did a little fast, and I apologize. Mm -hmm. Fans of The Exorcist are waking up to some exciting news this morning. Never thought I would read that. Uh, Universal announced a deal to produce a sequel trilogy worth upwards of $400 million. No word if Linda Blair will return uh, for the first film, which would debut in theaters in 2023. And uh, the other two would go straight to Peacock. Yeah. I am very excited about this because out of, I still think The Exorcist is, look, it's Kindle earlier today. Uh, I still think uh, <laughs> the Exorcist, not taken out of context like this, I still think The Exorcist is one of the scariest movies ever made. It stands up, it's frightening, it's horrifying, it's scary, and uh, I'm excited for this. And with Ellen Burstyn being back, and they have a good team behind the scenes, I'm excited for what they're going to do. Hmm. I love, I mean, there is that part where she walks down the stairs backwards and upside down. The crab down. walk? The crab walk, that ain't a crab walk. And did you know Terrifying. that? Terrifying. Well, did you know that wasn't in the initial cut of the film? How? It wasn't. They what? put that, yeah, they put that in. It was a deleted scene and they put it in. They re-released -re it, I believe, in like 98, 99, 2000. And then the crab walk was added, which is one of the most horrifying. The mother's yeah. having a party and, you know, here comes, uh, you know, Sebastian, the crab walking down, you know, yeah. you know, how about speaking in tongues. That's not, you know, you never want your kid walking upside down speaking tongues at a party. So reportedly, she was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it depends on the mix of the mix party. of the crowd. But I mean, you know, you don't she... want little Timmy speaking in tongues, you know? Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> now I've got this visual. I yeah. can't get out of my head. So to say, though, she was reportedly at the University of Minnesota back in the day, like the woman that it was all inspired after. Supposedly, the urban legend is that the dorm I lived in was the dorm she stayed in. Oh, really? The demonic the Oh, there. so the, the, the kid that the movie's allegedly based on yes, was in your dorm. Yes, went to the U of M for like help. Yeah. And she reportedly stayed in Pio, the old Pio Hall that has now been like redone. But I lived there before it was redone, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, that explains so much. So much. So much. Next in the dish, a new week means a new guest host. This is Jeopardy. And it's the week reading Rainbow and Star Trek fans have been waiting for. LeVar Burton took over the lectern. Look at this. And now, here is the guest host of Jeopardy, LeVar Burton. Thank you, Johnny. As a longtime viewer of the show, I am thrilled to have the opportunity to guest host Jeopardy. And I'm proud to be here to honor Alex's legacy. And I'm going to do my best to ensure that these talented Jeopardy contestants enjoy their moment here as well. Welcome, Matt, Patrick, and Kathleen. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's play Jeopardy. And here are the categories. The beloved host is raising money for the Reading is Fundamental Literacy Group. I love LeVar, and I think he is beloved because he is one of those rare celebrities that touches different generations in different ways. 
you either love him from reading Rainbow, mm -hmm. you love him from Star Trek, or you love him from his roles like in Roots, legendary, iconic, a miniseries from ABC in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So he touches very, you know, different age groups, you mm -hmm. know, I, I, I love him. And look, he seemed a little nervous in that first episode, but you, I mean, hello, it's Jeopardy. Right. Uh, but I loved his cadence. I love, we call it read, read rate, read style here in the business. I loved, I loved everything. I love, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I liked him. It was so, I'm of the reading rainbow generation. So it was so like, refreshing to see him, but also like, whoa, he's gray, he's older. You don't think of people that you like are so big with your childhood. You're like, do you get older? Do you? No. Whatever, youngin, we all get old. I know, but I was really excited about it too. I want him to have the job. Yeah. Hello. Again, Damn. Botox girl. I haven't showed emotion since 2012. <sighs> Just frozen like this. Right. Like right now I'm outraged. <laughs> sad, give me sad. How about happy? There we Thrilling. Go. That's it. See, you can't tell. You can't tell. It's just pure Botox mm -hmm. all going on. Mm -hmm. We have a lot more to come. Go get some Cheez-Its and a nice uh, chocolate quick, and we'll meet you back here in just a few minutes. Back in a moment. Coming up, it's the anniversary you didn't know we needed to celebrate. No one laughs at a master of quack foo. Quack, quack. It's Howard the Duck Day. Why this feathered friend remains a cult classic. Then it is a retro lover's dream trip. Kendall is taking you inside Moth Oddities. And the end is near. I, I can't focus on anything else. Ted is checking out The Bachelorette and looking ahead at what's next for Bachelor Nation. That and more when The Jason Show continues. I was in London uh, about a month ago. The World Cup was going on. I enjoy any sporting event where nations get involved. I find that the most exciting. The Olympics is really my favorite uh, sporting event, although I, I think I have a problem with that silver medal. I think if I was an Olympic athlete, I would rather come in last than win the silver, if you think about it. You know, you win the gold, you feel good. You win the bronze, you think, well, at least I got something. But you win that silver, that's like, congratulations, you almost won. Of all the losers, you came in first of that group. You're the number one loser. No one lost ahead of you. And they don't lose by much. You know, these short races, three hundredths of a second, two hundredths of a second. I don't know how they live with that the rest of their lives, because you gotta tell the story. Everyone wants to hear the story. Wow, congratulations, silver medal. Did you trip? Did you not hear the gun go off? Tell us what happened. <laughs> An old Seinfeld Olympics bit getting some renewed attention online as the Summer Olympics. Oh, I'm sorry. The Tokyo Games continue over there on another network. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I have to be clear. I have to give the peacock like a dollar or something. Probably. Yeah. And again, if you see that face, do not tell her anything about the Olympics. Do not. Wow, you do. That's a mean. That's a. That's an attitudey face right there. Is that's, it scary? It's a little scary. Thank you. Just a little bit. Perfected it over the years. I love it. <laughs> Next in the dish. Two weeks ago, we showed you. Now follow along here. We showed you the teaser, the teaser trailer, for the second reunion special for the Netflix show Love Is Blind. Now, our team assumed. That was enough to get folks excited about Messica's return. We were wrong. Overnight, Netflix released the official trailer. Get it? Not the teaser trailer. This is the trailer for Love is Blind after the altar. Look at this. Dating is not for the faint of heart, and I can't even imagine being single now. You don't need to be thinking about being single. Give me the lips. What does our future hold? We need adult supervision. That is true. We've had such an amazing year. <laughs> Two years. Come on, don't forget. No, no. I just want something real. Are you going to bend or are you going to break? You could just call me Bad Luck LC. <laughs> My biggest fear going into the party is seeing Mark's girlfriend. Apparently, he was sleeping with multiple other women. He had been fooling me the entire time. Ever since I can remember, I've been dreaming of finding a soulmate, and I found him. So y'all are not seeing other people or anything like that? 
So yeah, this yeah. is Francesca. Hi, how are you? Love is Blind after the altar is a three part special and will follow the couples and the singles after their TV show experiment that we were all obsessed with. What was this? Uh, 2019, 2020? Was it during the pandemic? No, two, years ago. two years ago. Okay. Yeah, 2020 didn't count. No, it didn't. Just <laughs> I did love that. Now, most of the crappy love dating shows that Ted watches, I don't yeah. like. This one I did enjoy. Yeah, I remember you saying that. I like I'm very impressed at this is going to sound goofy, but I'm serious about the lighting. Like they've clearly sunk some money into this, so clearly a lot of people really like it. Well, what? Don't you think yeah. they have great lighting for this? Yeah. TV? Yeah, I do. I hey, I appreciate good lighting. <laughs> I think cuz normally we watch these shows, is my point, and it looks like what is happening over yeah, here it looks all like the a time. Movie. And that looks like, wow, is this Laguna Beach? Uh -huh. That's what it reminds me of. Just I don't know. And for the record, we have great lighting here. Photographer Eric Mm -hmm. One of the best. He has a, a light Low that ball. costs like eighty thousand yeah. dollars, and it's beautiful. You saw it a couple weeks ago with the uh, when we had Jeff Timmons on. We used yes. it on executive producer Lori Fisher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, I loved it that Lori got the better lighting than any of us. She knows what to ask for. She does. Next in the dish, do you want to smell like Dolly Parton soon? Uh, I do. Heck yeah. So, thank you, Eric, for clapping at that. Soon you may be able to. She appeared on Good Morning's The Americas to talk about her latest venture. Look at this. And now you're breaking into the world of perfume. <laughs> I have scent from above right here. What am I holding in my hands? Can you explain Well, this, this is me? Dolly, scent from above, and I, I named it that because it smells heavenly. One of the reasons that I uh, developed it because people always follow me around asking me what I'm wearing. And so I got with the fragrance people and we worked on it for months and months and months, actually a few years. And so everybody says it smells like me and that's good. Now let's be clear. Most celebrity uh, perfumes smell like panther urine. This I'm, I'm anxious to try. What is Panther urine. I don't know, but I'm just saying it's nasty. Have you smelled panther urine? I have. I worked at a zoo in my freshman year. Oh. But I'm saying most of it is gross. And, and there's a reason why you see most celebrity uh, fragrances on the clearance rack yeah. at the CVS after a couple months. Dolly, though, I think it's going to smell good. If I buy you some, will you, will you wear it for the show? Absolutely not. Oh. What if I don't like it? Oh my goodness, you are just. <laughs> okay, not like anyone at home can smell me anyway. No, but I mean, lady, we have an hour to fill every day. I mean, we have an hour to fill every day. I think it... Eric should wear it. <laughs> Did I just call her lady? Yeah. <laughs> lady? Lady? We have an hour to fill every day, and if putting some perfume on you will fill a segment, we're doing it. You're gonna wear that perfume. That's right. I'll wear Dracar. I'll test some crappy male perfume. Who's Jakar? Dracar. What? Dracar. I said it right, Dracar? Dracar oh, I love that Jeff is French? correcting me about 90s cologne uh, pronunciations. Dracar. It was, Dr it was Dracar and it was in a black bottle. And we thought it, here's one of the things. It's one of those things like uh, multicolored denim in one outfit. We mm -hmm. thought it was a good idea in the 90s and it, it turned out not to be a good idea. Um, oh. Thank you. Um, it smelled awful, but like, we loved it. Oh, Abercrombie and Fitch used to have this fierce cologne. I think they still have it. And everybody also wore that in the late 90s, early yeah, 2000s. Yeah, your generation loved the Abercrombie and Fitch. Still do. I wasn't even, I, they have that ugly wand that they go through with the customers. I could never get in. Can I tell you something about that? Sure, again, we have an I hour to fill every day. <laughs> I would go with all my friends, like multiple different groups of friends to the Abercrombie, and they would used to go up to you and be like, you're so beautiful, like you should work here. And they would do it to like Alicia, Alyssa, Brittany, Kristen, Caitlin. It was like, and they would skip over me every time. Every time. That's why I don't shop there. Okay. If you believe that story, I am TV not land, kidding you. Hand, hand. hand to you Bible. You have looked this beautiful since you popped out. Excuse Don't tell me, me that I someone, was five eight when everyone else was a nice petite, like five foot nothing. I had a big old booty and some big old cheeks and blonde hair. I looked ridiculous. Hey, so I hung out I. with snakes. I had all that too. <laughs> <laughs> the perfume from Dolly will be sold on the home shopping network. God, we're back to that story. I feel like that was four minutes ago. 
I think it was. It was. Next on the dish, Heather Locklear is coming back to the small screen thanks to a new deal with Lifetime. The former Melrose Place uh, special guest star will star in a new TV movie, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, the Christine Carlson story. Try to fit that on a graphic. Uh, it's a biopic about an author who wrote several best-selling books following the death of her husband. The movie is almost guaranteed to be a hit because serving as executive producer on the project is the legendary Hollywood filmmaker, Megan McCain. It's he <laughs> <laughs> She's the Francis Ford Coppola of made-for-TV movies. It's Heather's first acting role since she appeared in an episode of ABC's Fresh Off the Boat in 2017. Hey, it's good to see Heather back. I grew up with Heather. Uh, TJ Hooker. We have Sammy Joe in Dynasty. Uh, and then special guest star in Melrose Place. Why are you looking at me like I just bit your toe or something? A TJ Hooker? Who's that? TJ Hooker was a show with William Shatner. Oh, wasn't it? Well, it was Shatner, wasn't it? He was yeah, he was Hooker. <laughs> Uh, he was, he uh, was a hooker. He was the hooker. He okay. was TJ Hooker. And then she played a cop. She played like a, like a, she was on his squad or whatever. Is that your cop impersonation? I think it can is. You, but can you try it again? Anyway, and then, and then she went over to Dynasty and she played Troublemaker Sammy Joe. Oh, she did both at the same time for a while. Yeah. She was great. Multifaceted. She was, I mean, we, we can laugh at, she was a huge star in the 80s. Oh, no, she People loved Heather Locklear. She's a babe. Yeah. Next mm -hmm. up, it's the Marvel movie you probably don't remember. In fact, it's the first big screen Marvel movie ever made, and it happened in 1986. But instead of earning rave reviews like Iron Man or Black Panther, this movie is considered one of the worst movies, not just Marvel movies, one of the worst movies ever made. Remember this? That's it. No more Mr. Nice Duck. <laughs> Let the female creature go. Every duck's got his limit, and you scum have pushed me over the line. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a clip from Howard the Duck about a duck living on Duck World who ends up in Cleveland where he meets a musician played by Leah Thompson. Despite being a box office bomb, the movie has since become a cult hit. And if I remember correctly, wasn't it a George Lucas production? Yeah, it was under his banner. Yeah. Well, this year, Mar <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful face. <laughs> now I know why Abercrombie didn't hire you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that face now. Uh, this year marks 35 years since the movie came out, and it's getting renewed attention after popping up in the trailer for the upcoming Disney Plus show, What If? The Hollywood Reporter looked back at the making of the movie, and it turns out, listen to this, Robin Williams was cast to be the voice of the duck, but quit the role after a few days because his voice didn't ma couldn't match up with the beak. <laughs> oh, my gosh, this keeps getting better. <laughs> Leah... Leah Thompson was a huge star because uh, this was after Back to the Future, so everyone wanted her, but says she realized there were big issues. She realized she was in it while filming the movie. She says people still ask her about it all the time. Some fans hope Marvel brings back the character in a new TV show or movie. Leah Thompson from Minnesota. She was here. We, the next time she comes in, we have to ask her about the duck. Okay, so it's a duck from Duck World who ends duck up World. in Cleveland. Yeah, and he, he lands fights on, bad guys. Yeah, he lands he lands in Cleveland. And Robin Williams couldn't match his duck voice to the beak. Yeah, the beak was moving. Is it, the duck is called a beak, right? And Marvel yeah. fans a bill. Want more? Yeah, a bill, a, a duck bill. So the bill was moving like too slow, and Robin, you know, so it could never match up. What is this, Scorsese? No, it match up correctly. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I remember watching it, and it's... You like watched looking, it? Oh, yeah. It was 86. We didn't care. <laughs> and it was George Lucas. We wanted anything from Lucas. We would have taken anything, because this was after Return of the Jedi. We wanted, you know, this is after Star Wars. So, yeah. go watch it. It's, it's, a, it's hysterical. I am not watching that. That's all right. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody come pick her up? <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> I'm going to take her home.
Welcome back. Jeff was over here messing with my He-Man figure. I don't, I just, just, you don't have to, he's not to play with. He's just for decoration. Yes. Welcome back. When it comes to everything from clothing to home furnishings or toys, retro is big. And one new store in Northeast Minneapolis really specializes in cool retro finds from the 50s to the 90s, discovered across the U.S., even in Italy. It's called, and I love this name, Moth Oddities. Here's a tour via Kindle. Look at this. I'm really excited because not only do I love to shop and I love vintage, but we've been talking about this for over a year. I know. Yana. Moth oddities. I'm so happy for you guys. You actually are open in store. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's so exciting to finally be able to open and have people come in after a so year long. of signing the lease. And right. Being in here, just the two of us kind of building it out, taking the time to do it. But yeah, the point is to have people in and like interact with the clothes and try things on. Well, totally. So. <laughs> okay. You guys have been hunting down vintage stuff for a long time though. You're not like yeah. new to vintage, right? No, we've been doing moth out of these for seven years. So okay. yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, so this is a long time coming and then this stupid pandemic hit, like so many things yeah. that you converted. You decided instead yes. <laughs> that you were going to just sell stuff on your Instagram page. Yep, and that's what we've been doing anyway, so it wasn't like too much of a change up as it was, but yeah. then this space let us be able to see things on a bigger scale and also we could do curbside pickup with our customers and interact with more people face to face, which was nice, even though like we had to social distance still, but right. it was like, hey, thanks for buying that. Like, I'm so curious, A, how quickly does something go out the door? Like your average item? Well, it's, it's hard to say, because you just open. <laughs> I mean, literally last night we posted something on Instagram and it sold within like one minute. So it, if it's Instagram, that can be within minutes. Mm -hmm. If it's in the store, it can be the same day. It can also be like, if it's a higher price item that's like demanding that like, one person, that one perfect yeah. person for it, that could be a year. Right. But we want, like, we wait till we find that person because it's their story to continue it on. Anytime somebody walks in here, it's gonna look a little different. Every time that you walk in, there's gonna be new items. Yeah. We're getting new stuff every week. We have a bunch of inventory that's not on the floor because as you can see, it's pretty packed in here anyway. If you uh, like something, you better grab exactly, it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's like, it might not be there just the day after, so. But you guys have really done a nice job of making it look um, curated, I think is like the best word to use. Yeah, we've been doing this for about seven years, so we've kind of refined a style. So we, we knew exactly what we wanted when we got into the space. Um, and we love how uh, color blocking kind of works with the inventory. Yeah. So, I'm seeing that with the clothes specifically. Yeah, definitely. So items are organized by type, so there'll be blouses and dresses and t-shirts and everything. And then within that, kind of the color coordination and sizing. Uh, so you could be like, oh, I need you know a white blouse for an outfit, or like I'm looking for a rad uh, band tee, so I'm gonna go straight to like the black t-shirts. So. I've specifically heard there's a jean den. Oh yes. The denim den? The denim, denim den. den. Can yep. you bring me to the, the denim den, den? Of course, yeah. The denim the den. Yeah. Because um, I've never heard of one of those, so <laughs> I'm enchanted. Did you find me in hot pink in the denim den? I stick out like a sore thumb in here. <laughs> um, okay, even the clothing, the like changing rooms have denim in them. Yep. <laughs> Why Absolutely. are you doing denim den? Just everything. I mean, denim is one of our best sellers, yeah. and we love finding denim. It's one of the things that we search for constantly. Yeah. And we knew that we wanted to have a specific space that would just be like, kind of enveloping you and be like, whoa, this is crazy. I have to ask, when I'm looking at all these jackets or any kind of item that's vintage, what are like a couple of tips to know that, hey, this is probably worth the investment. It's gonna be cool for a long time. Try everything on. Okay. Bring as many things in the changing room as you can. Just see like what kind of classic pieces that could work into your wardrobe, whether it be that perfect pair of jeans, that perfect denim jacket, or that summer dress that right. perfectly is like, that picnic, but also, you know, patio right. vibes and everything. Like I could wear it and my mom could wear it right. and it's gonna be cool forever. Absolutely, and the thing is about here, your mom might have worn the dress that we're selling, so. <laughs> Probably, my mom has great taste. <laughs> Love you, mom. I'm gonna be your jeans back. It's the rule, if you wore it once, you can't wear it again. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay, now I mentioned Italy. Yes. 
in the lead into that. Yes. How do they get stuff? I mean, how does that work? Okay, so they have a lot of their vintages, obviously, from right here in the yeah. States. So it's easier to curate. But back in the day, so they've been doing this for about a decade. They met a woman who was like, hey, I am in Italy now and I would love to send you things. So a lot of their stuff in there is really cool vintage Italian clothing, too. So kind of a funky thing that's different than everywhere else in the metro. Um, and I love it. I was telling Kendall during uh, the airing of the piece, uh, no offense to other stores, but sometimes you go in these like resale shops and it's just kind of a mess. Right. And it doesn't make shopping enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Their merchandising is is stellar. It's really mm -hmm. cool in there. Yeah, super well curated. Um, both Eric and I, after the piece, were like, can we shop for a little while? <laughs> Got yeah. a couple things. So Got a couple things? Yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. How about a roll? Did you get that Rolling Stone shirt? No, but I got the I got a really cool gopher hat and a cool necklace. Okay, did you see anything like any Disney stuff in there for me? I'm sorry, I wasn't looking. Oh wow, <laughs> I always look for stuff for you, but that's fine. To learn more about Moth Oddities, check them out online. Bloop. Their website is MothOddities.com, and if you missed this, you want to share it, help them out, you know, support local. We'll post this on the Jason Show Facebook page. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back. Follow. Oh, see, look. Mickey Mouse right there. We'll be back after these words. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. My little Porg. My little He-Man. That's a Porg. Yeah, from The Last Jedi. Welcome back to the show. It's no secret uh, that I love all things Disney. But now there's a new show giving us a behind-the-scenes look and what it takes to create some of the biggest attractions at Disney parks. It's called Behind the Attraction and it airs on Disney Plus. It debuted over the weekend. Uh, here's a little preview and we'll talk about it on the other side. It's exciting and it's tantalizing in a way. You don't know what's around the corner. You'll get a copy of the spiel script and that's kind of like a menu. Ooh, delicious puns. I love a good pun. A small world with a tiny problem. At first we we're going to sing their own national anthem. It's just noise. Cropped castles. People are surprised that it's only 70 feet tall. No! Yes! Yeah. And what in the galaxy far, far away is that? We refer to it as the Darth Vader ballet. This is the kind of making of dreams are made of. This is what makes it so authentic to me. It's like nothing else you've ever seen. And so it is. So it's a 10 episode event, as the trailer says. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is one of the executive producers of the show, and it makes sense. Perfect timing because uh, The Rock is in the new Jungle Cruise movie, which the Jungle Cruise, one of the first rides ever at Disneyland. Now a new movie. Uh, now, the first five episodes are available now. Now, the episode that I watched first, uh, which I love because if you if you follow me on social media, you know, I love the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Now, if you've never gone to any of the Disney parks or you're not familiar with what this ride is, it's basically a drop ride, but you're in an elevator. You're in an elevator shaft and it's based. The theming is based on the legendary Twilight Zone uh, TV show. And the story goes, you're in this hotel uh, back in the 30s. Something mystical and paranormal has happened to the elevator and lightning hit it and sent four people into another dimension and now you're in that same elevator. Well, great story, but this show shows you how they made an elevator drop and then shoot straight up. You kind of have to defy gravity, if I may quote Wicked, because the drop needs to be so fast that you feel it as, as a guest sitting there. And they, the, you learn in this episode, they went to an elevator company and said, we actually need you to do what you've avoided doing your entire existence. We need you to make an elevator that doesn't work. We need you to make an elevator that basically not only drops but can go up, but also go sideways. And you see how they crafted and built this system in Disney World, and then they've it's now in all a version of it is in all the Disney parks. And as you saw in that uh, teaser, they do it's a small world, they do Space Mountain, uh, they show you the rides that this is showing you uh, the Star Wars land, uh, the Millennium Falcon ride, which is basically a simulator. How they crafted that, this is Rise of the Resistance, that is the 20 minute ride that you hear a lot about. Um, and it's really interesting to go back. If you oh, there's Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Uh, it's interesting if you've gone on any of these to learn the stories behind them because 
it is it really does take a village. You, you don't think about the massive amounts of people and time and testing that it takes before you, the guests, can actually get on it. It takes years of de development for these rides to come to fruition. It's not just, oh, let's do a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Okay, no, I mean, it takes thousands of people, thousands of man hours, and a lot of research to get the rides just right. And it, it's so cool. It's so awesome. Do they talk mostly about like the technical aspect or do they delve into the design? They side do of everything. It too? They tell the backstory. Oh, cool. Uh, like, you know, with Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, mm -hmm. the, 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 the ride came because they just wanted to expand the park. Uh, it was such a hit in the, you know, it opened in 89. They were like, oh, we want to expand the park. We need another signature ride. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael Eisner, the big wig at the time, said, okay, here's what I want I want a drop ride. So the Dis they went to the Imagineers and they said, we want a drop ride, go do it. So then the Imagineers had to come up with, okay, the boss wants a drop ride, what kind of drop ride and what kind of story, because everything's about a story, what story do we put with this drop ride? And they came up with a hotel. Okay, what's in a hotel? An elevator. Elevator can go up and down, got it. You know, they, cool. they, they locked the story, so to speak. It's, it's really interesting. It's great for the whole family. There are five more episodes, uh, and they're all available. They're all available actually right now. The whole collection, I think, well, half the collection and the rest will be released later this year. You can find Behind the Attraction on Disney+. Plus. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. It's a small world after all. <laughs> now that I get stuck in your head. Something happened, which kind of changes things for me. What happened? Um, you know, obviously James is home and I was FaceTiming him. He said, um, you know, like, well, you know, outside of the, where are you? Why aren't you coming home? He said, like, why don't you want to see me anymore? And um, that's, I, I can't focus on anything else. Yeah. I know what I'm focusing on. Heartbreak on The Bachelorette last night as Michael, one of the final four remaining men, leave the show to be with his son. That conversation left Katie in tears, wondering if the man of her dreams just left her life forever. What does this mean going forward? <laughs> Once again, it's time for 47% of America loves Ted. Joining us from Bachelor Nation headquarters, otherwise known as the new Fox 9 control room, is Ted Johnson. Hello, Ted. Good morning. That's a... Uh, He's, he's an interesting individual right there, Michael. But let's talk about, we were supposed to go do the hometown dates, but that didn't happen. False advertising. What, so what up with that? So they teased that there was going to be, I sort of, so they teased hometown dates and they teased uh, men tell all in the same tease. So I figured, okay, we're going to get both. We're going to get hometown dates, and then we're going to do uh, the, you know, the men tell all. Yeah. Well, they had Michael break up with her, so now we're down to three, and then they just did decide to go with men tell all. So they they just skipped it all together. They skipped it all together. I guess we're going to get it next week. Okay. So Michael, we just saw here they are hugging. He Michael left to be with his son. That's sweet. Uh, but was he really in contention? You know, I think I, I had him running about third. Okay. So I, you know, he was in fantasy oh, suite territory. He's aggressively holding her head right there, Ted. He's like, <laughs> anyway, go ahead. He was in fantasy suite territory. <laughs> but other than, you know, he wasn't going to win. He no. wasn't going to win. Uh, so as you mentioned, no hometown. They went right to men tell all. So what uh, did you watch? Did you actually watch that or were you frustrated and just gave up? I, I was frustrated. I watched a little bit. Um, it's. First of all, the men tell all is never my favorite episode. I, I do know that about you. But all they did was yell at each other and show really long clips, and it was really edited. So you knew that the you know Tasha and Caitlyn were not. They were no Chris Harrison's 
for oh. the men tell all. So it was kind of a. I keep forgetting he's no longer with the show. I keep right. forgetting about that. Okay, so we're done with that, right, Ted? Let's move on. But uh, yeah, let let's move on because the men for Michelle's Bachelorette season have been released. I believe that's the graphic you have next to you, right? Are those the no? Men? These this is this is the current season. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the current season, um, but we they did release. Uh, the crop for Michelle's season on Facebook, you know, just to see who's, who's trending better than others. Yeah. So um, what, what do we have? What, what, what are we looking at? So I figured we could go through some of them. Sure. Um, so this is Alec. Hello, Alec. Uh, what do you think? I mean, he looks like he, you know, likes to have fun. I think he lives in Virginia. So yeah, he goes to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. I, I would I would probably give him a hometown date, maybe. I would too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now we have Brandon. Let's look at him, Ted. I, he's a religious guy, it appears. Yes, I see the cross. Yes. But I, I don't know if he's lying to us. No, I, I don't think that's a face that lies. I like him. You think he's there for the right reasons? I think he's there for the right reasons. I do. Okay, we have Brett. Let's go ahead, Leo. Put Brett up. I don't like Brett. Brett's not getting a rose on night one. Oh, you're sending him home right away? Yeah. What do you think? That, sh that shirt is too tight, and the smile is too big. Yeah, maybe we're putting him back on the limo. Okay, Brian. Now, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong. Are we looking at a Wisconsin guy here? He is Wisconsin. I believe it's Holton, which is just across the river from Stillwater. Look at that pose, Ted. Look. He's, now, see, that's a crafted pose right he there. He is longingly looking into the camera. And I like how, you know, his hands are perfectly positioned in his pocket, and then his shirt's not wrinkled. You know what I mean? Someone yeah. pulled the shirt out and, and straightened it out there. That's a know-it-all Nick shirt, too. That is. And then finally, speaking of local, do we have a Minneapolis guy, Ted? Joe. And go for basketball fans will remember Joe, Joe Coleman. He was the one time Mr. Basketball. He played for the Gophers for a few years. Um, so he's from Minnesota, Minneapolis. Um, and there are some rumblings that maybe Michelle and Joe know each other. Oh, well, I like Joe. I'm not just saying this because he's in Minneapolis. I get a good, I get a good, I get a good sense from him. He gives off good vibes, and it's like he's 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 here for the right reasons. Yes, he is. Just like you, Ted. Just like you. Always. Is that the January 6th commission uh, on behind his head? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Right there. Right there. Yeah. It's not, I think Fauci's somewhere over here. Yeah. The news never stops in that control room, I, even if this goofy shows <laughs> on. Ted Johnson, thank you, my friend. Thank you. You can watch The Bachelorette on another network. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. So glad you're here. You have a lot of choices in the morning, and we're glad you chose us. You can stay connected with our show on social media. Check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This, the name, Jason Joe TV. You can also follow our personal accounts, uh, Kendall Mark, and to search for me, Jason Matheson, on, in my social media today, I barged in on Marion Mim Davies' office. I walked right up. Yep. I barged right in her office. So you ever wonder what a big, big time TV executive looks like? Head to my Instagram. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. Big time executive. Kendall, big. <laughs> now, when I said I barged into our boss's office, Jeff rightly pointed out, this isn't a new thing. No. I mean, I do it, what, daily, Kendall? Just a new office. Yeah, it's now, I have to climb stairs. Yeah. To bust into her office and walk right by her assistant. Hello, Aaron. And I just I don't even, little protective gargoyle, you know? Like, you're in. You're in. Ready for the question? Oh, man, I hate when we do the surprise version. Here we go, really quick. Okay. Who is your current celebrity crush? I don't know. I think it's still Thor. Chris Hemsworth? No, Thor. Not Chris Hemsworth. Thor. That's what? Chris Hemsworth. No, but the, the, the Thor, the Thunder God is my celebrity crush. Why is that not okay? But that's but he's played by It doesn't matter. <sighs> 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 
I am exhausted. <laughs> Me too. Can someone pick her up? Can somebody come get her? <laughs> tomorrow, Jordan, <laughs> tomorrow on the show, the team from Destination Fear is back as they launch season three of their show. Plus, one of the doctors from the show, My Feet Are Killing Me, will join us. Go out there and be yourself, except for Kendall. Because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. See you tomorrow.